What, wise? <laughs> well, we'll see about that in a minute. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so the question for you this morning. Do you like munchies? Oh, you like munchies. Does, have you ever been able to eat just one potato chip? Does the smell of popcorn popping just make your mouth water? Well, if so, do you know what that proves? You are American. <laughs> Get ready for this. Americans eat nearly a ton of food every year, each American. And it isn't all fruits and vegetables. Almost 200 pounds of that is red meat and fats. 50 pounds are cookies, 24 pounds of ice cream, oh. 25 pounds of french fries, and that doesn't even count the ketchup. And then we wash it all down with 53 gallons of soda. And we're still hungry. In 2007, there was a medical report published that said People with similar personalities will choose the same snack food about 95% of the time. So, if you happen to like cheese curls, you're someone who has a great empathy and feeling for ethics and morals. So, cheese curls will now be served every day in Congress. If you're passionate for popcorn, it means you're a take charge kind of person. So ministry team leaders, popcorn to be served at every meeting. And if you happen to be nuts for nuts, you're someone who is even tempered, caring, kind, empathetic, nice to their pastor. So from now on, nuts are gonna be served at every congregation. Now, I guess this kind of means we, we are what we eat. But that doesn't mean this congregation is nuts. I confess, and my waistline testifies to that truth, that I really like munchies. The problem is, whenever I eat munchies, I just never seem to get enough. Something just seems to be missing. Wow, when cookies... Cookies, I gotta have ice cream. Peanuts and popcorn, I gotta have a soda to wash that down. And licorice, well, licorice just requires more and more licorice. Life's a little bit like that. When we crave something, we just seem to want more and more and more. But even though we take more and more and more in, something, something seems missing. We still hunger for something, something that is missing. How about you in your life today? What do you hunger for? What would it take and where will you find something to satisfy your hungry heart? Hint, you won't find it in a bag of Cheetos and you won't find it in a bag of popcorn. So. Where do you think you will find it? Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Gordon Lathrop is probably the foremost authority on Lutheran liturgy. And Gordon tells a story, he told it in a class that I had from him about meeting a Salvation Army colonel while he was on a flight. Lathrop engaged the colonel in conversation, sharing his Lutheran faith and asking questions of the Salvation Army colonel. Particularly, Lathrop wanted to know why the Salvation Army didn't celebrate Holy Communion. And the colonel looked at him and said, well, you see, in the Salvation Army, 
We believe we are the sacrament. We give ourselves, our heart, our soul, our body, for the sake of the world and for those in need. Gordon said he was stunned by the man's answer. He felt about this big and wanted to hide under his airplane seat. Because while thinking that they didn't have an understanding of communion and the sacrament, Gordon realized that their understanding was really, really deep. And that their understanding was the giving of life to others as the living body of Christ. He was stunned by what the man said. And Jesus' words in the text today may have stunned you. This last of the bread stories is one that pastors always kind of dread. You probably were stunned as you listened to this difficult text. Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Jesus' words were pretty difficult to understand for the Jewish people that were listening to him. And when we hear those with our words with our modern ears, well, they can be difficult for us to swallow as well. Non-Christians might think, of the word cannibalism when they hear these verses. But in the ancient Near East, there was no understanding of cannibalism. So the Jews following him were really confused by what he was saying, probably like we're a little confused today. They simply were not of a spiritual mindset to understand what Jesus was talking about. This teaching is difficult, they thought. Who can accept it? This guy, this guy must be nuts. They couldn't stand the heat, so they got out of Jesus' kitchen, a kitchen full of bread stories, eating flesh and drinking blood that they neither could relate to nor wanted to hear. Clearly, cooking with Jesus was not easy. Perhaps that be that's because Jesus is not a leisurely pursuit, one that can be done in just a few moments with the latest spiritual gadgets or sayings. Jesus, taking Jesus into ourselves is a full-time challenge, but it is a challenge that will transform us from the inside out. After all, we become what we eat. And he tells us, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I abide in them. Through this sacrament, the act of taking the body and blood of Jesus into ourselves, we live out those words. We become the living body of Christ. And as the Jews didn't easily understand, don't expect us to understand this as easily as well. Perhaps, for these challenging verses, the best thing a pastor can do, the best advice a pastor can give, is simply to say, well, have faith and be grateful. For the only ingredients necessary for the bread of life are faith and grace. But that would be the easy way out for us. Just saying have faith might be easier for us to swallow this text but the text has much more meaning than just swallowing and having faith. You see, the Greek word in this text for eating, partaking of Jesus, the word is trogo. And the word's meaning is not taking polite little nibbles. The word means to gnaw on, to crunch on, to gobble up with gusto. That's pretty raw language, pardon the pun. But Jesus is telling the crowd then, and us here today, that is how we will have life in Christ and life in God, by partaking fully and with gusto of the true bread of life, Jesus Christ. And in doing that, Jesus will abide in us as we will abide in him. 
To really abide in Christ, we truly need to understand the deep significance of John 6 in the life of a Christian. Truly understand that the sacrament of Holy Communion is more than just a little bread and wine. For a Christian, it is true life itself. True life. Life that we live into with gusto by fully partaking of Jesus at this table. Not just doing the act of communion, but truly living out the act of communion in our lives. Dear friends, we began this bread series three weeks ago at the feeding of the 5,000 when we learned that there is only one reason necessary for why we can, and that reason is Jesus Christ. To believe not just in Jesus' miracles, but to believe in him, the bread of life from heaven. In John 6, over the last two weeks, we've heard words that urge us to feast on the bread of life and share the bread of life as Christ shares this sacrament with the world and with each of us. And today, Christ asks us to abide in him. What does it mean to you in your life to abide in Jesus and for Jesus to abide in you? Abide. Interesting word, has several meanings. Abide is an action word that means to dwell, to dwell in Jesus. Abiding in him, we dwell in him, and he dwells in us by feasting on the bread of life and sharing his body and blood with the world. Abide is an action word that means to find something acceptable. By abiding in Jesus, we find his body and blood acceptable, true food and true drink that nourishes us spiritually, that we might understand God's singular purpose for salvation, that we believe in Jesus Christ. Abide is an action word that means to await something. As we abide in Jesus, we abide and wait for the fulfillment of God's promise when our broken humanity will be raised up to life eternal at the banquet that will last for all time. And when we abide in Christ and he abides in us, we become as one with God. We become the living body of Christ in our world today. Abiding in Christ, abiding in the bread of life, abiding in the cup of salvation, true food and true drink, abiding that we may do the work of Christ as the body of Christ in our world today. Dear sisters and brothers, whether you be young or old, black or white, male or female, gay or straight, progressive or conservative, we can be the hands and feet and words of Christ in our world today, together. And the recipe to do that, it's pretty simple. Believe in Jesus. Believe that, yes, together with Christ we can. Believe in the bread of life. Believe in Jesus. Feast on the bread of life. Share the bread of life with others and abide. Dwell in the bread of life. That, dear friends, is God's recipe for a life filled with love and grace for you and for all people a life filled with the abundant promises of God, promises that flow from the font, promises that fill us with true food and drink at our Lord's table, and a promise, a promise of hope for a better tomorrow. So, Tutti a tavola. Everyone come to the table. This is God's table, and all are welcome. Thanks be to God. Amen.